Hey everyone. So I've been gone a long time now and I decided uh, if I'm gonna make a comeback video, if you will, I want it to be a simple one. So today I'm gonna talk about one of my favorite features in Visual Studio Code. Probably the only thing that keeps bringing me back to this editor, even though my default editor is Emacs. And that is the Python interactive mode in Visual Studio Code. Now, before we talk about the Python interactive mode itself, I want to take a moment to talk about the fact that Visual Studio Code will actually open IPython notebooks just natively. This is a relatively recent feature, I think one year or something like that. And to do that, we can just do like open a file. And then I have this running code example notebook that I got from the internet. And if I just click on that, it's going to do a few things. First, you're going to see the JSON, and then it's going to run the notebook. And what it's doing actually is in the background, it is running a Jupyter server. And then it is using that to serve this notebook effectively the same way that a browser might. And then if you wanted your work to be inside a particular Python virtual environment, you actually get the ability to select the virtual environments, similar to how you might be doing it in a normal Python workflow in VS Code. Note that to get to this point, all I had to do was install the official Python extension. VS Code handles basically everything else. Now you can see VS Code shows me all the available global Python environments. And then I also made a virtual environment called test, and that option is there as well. This notebook functions almost exactly like a normal notebook. So if I just hit shift enter on a cell, it'll run that cell or render markdown. I can run this cell and then the value of A will be set to 10. Printouts show up as you expect. And yeah, it works just like a normal notebook. Now, I love notebooks for prototyping, uh, and I use them or used to use them all the time. But this feature that I'm going to talk about, the Python interactive mode, has completely removed notebooks from my workflow. So if I go ahead and open a new file and just save that as a Python file, this is a standard Python file right now. There's not going to be anything special about it until I make this special comment. And all of a sudden, VS Code gives me these options. I can run this cell. I can run this cell and run the cells below, or I can debug this cell. This looks an awful lot like a notebook. So if I go ahead and write, let's say, import OS, I did a control enter there, which is standard uh, notebook shortcut for running the cell but not advancing. And what VS Code does now is that it throws up this interactive window on the right. And then in that window, it actually ran the command that was in that cell. I can go back to the cell and let's say they do shift enter, and it'll run that command again. It'll show me what that command is, and if it, if it has any output, we will see the output as well. And then there's also this icon that you can click to go to the code, the, the particular cell that generated that output. So you can sort of keep these two pieces, the code on the left and the output on the right, in sync to some degree. Now, if I were to write a command that produces an output, for example, os.listires, that output gets printed on the right as well. This thing on the right, it's like a normal IPython shell. On the bottom, I actually get a prompt, and it says, you know, you can type code here and press shift enter to run, very similar to writing something in a cell. So great, we have a very basic text file, just a normal.py file, but we can interact with it. We can separate it out in the same way as a notebook. This is amazing to me, and I, I hope you're excited as well. Now, I'm pretty bad when it comes to abusing IPython magics. And one of the cool things that this mode does is that you can actually keep those magics. So the one unholy line that no one should ever, ever run, but we all run anyway, PyLab inline, you can just run that. Oh, and I get an error when I try to do that because I was not in the right virtual environment. You can switch the virtual environment by clicking on this button on the lower left. If I click on that, it gives me the same options that I was showing before. I want the test virtual environment because I have matplotlib installed in that, so I click that. And actually, before we can run the cell again, we have to restart the IPython kernel because we changed our virtual environment. So we do that. It says all variables will be lost. I usually set that to yes and don't ask again. And then because the output on the right has kind of started getting kind of cluttered, we can use this button, this X mark, to remove all the cell output. And then we can run the cell again. And now the magic works. It populates the interactive namespace. We get everything that we want. And then we can do stuff that we would normally be doing in a notebook. So make a plot. And the plot shows up on the right. 
it is in line. And one of the nice benefits of using this is, unlike in IPython Notebook, this plot is actually not being rasterized into something like a JPEG or a PNG. Instead, instead it stays as an SVG. So we can actually zoom in and look at sort of the details. So the basic mainstays of cell-based execution of code and plotting and stuff like that works. Um, also, there's special support for pandas. When your output contains a pandas data frame, it gets uh, formatted nicely. And then one of the really cool things that you get here is also you can list all the variables that have been defined in this notebook. Right now, we don't actually have any variables defined. But if I set this data frame equal to something, then I see what the variable is, what the type is, some information about it, what its value is, et cetera. And I can double click on it. And for data frames, we also get this nice little data viewer where you can sort of sort things. You know, you kind of get an Excel-ish output almost for free, which is kind of nice. And then finally, one of the really cool things that you can do here is because this is VS Code, we can go ahead and set breakpoints visually and then click debug cell. And that launches this whole really nice visual debugger where you can view sort of all the variables that currently exist, you know, the locals and the globals for the Python interpreter. You can view the call stack, kind of jump through it, et cetera. We can put watches on variables and then step through the code. So yeah, that's pretty much it. You get, in my opinion, pretty much all the benefits of having a notebook, but you can keep a normal text file that can be very quickly turned into a module and packaged and deployed, and that's really, really useful to me. I hope this has also been useful to you. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you have been staying safe. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and liking. And until next time, bye.